Good morning guys, welcome back to Tim's Cotswold Farm. So yesterday, Dad and I took a little trip down to Suffolk and we visited the Claydon factory. Now Claydon is a drill that we had out on demo in the springtime, so if you haven't seen that video yet, please do check it out, I'm gonna put a link above. A couple of weeks after harvest, I also wanted to see the difference between the Claydon drill barley and the conventional drill barley. So I did a separate video on that and it was about four or five weeks ago and I'm gonna put a link up above for that one as well, so please do check it out too. Now, we learned so much yesterday. This has got to be a two-parter. So part one, obviously now, we're going to have a look around the factory, see how they make a strip till drill. And then part two, I'm going to drop on Sunday. So please do not miss it. You're ready. Let's find out how they make them. Go. And here we are, the birthplace of the Clayton drill, the Clayton family farm. So we're going to have a look around the factory. We're going to have a look around the farm. And I think we're going to dive into a presentation now. But this is typical Wickenbrook land. It's, it's very heavy clay. This was ploughed in November and this is in April time. He's trying to make a seed bed. Look at the soil, how different it is. Because we haven't done anything to it, it's, it's that laying in the natural form. My accountant came in and he said, I hate to tell you this, you're always successful make a profit, but this year, Jeffrey, you have not made a profit. And during the 70s, direct drilling was first introduced, and we had a chemical, paraquat, really deadly. And often lay open, and you'd see the seed and the fertilizer in the trench, the birds would eat it, and 60% of the time, we might be successful. Direct drilling in the 70s got such a bad report we designed a V-formation machine to break the soil, place the seed, and just gently firm it in. Because we had a, a shear bolt in this machine, somebody managed to break 100 shear bolts in one day. And so we thought we'd better build something different. Start of the SR. The SR was um, stone release, and that's why it's called SR. Had a big spring time which released around the stones. A second spring time to place the seed, the same as this one and the wheels on the back. And he took all of the good points out of this one, all of the good points out of this one, and the next generation of drills was the hybrid. You know, those yields have gone up, but they've plateaued. So, but our biggest problem, probably going forward, is public opinion. The seed is put in a band, like you see there. <coughs> the boards on the back level it down, and the harrows finish it off nicely. With a clay and drill and roll it. So his costs are down here, 28 pounds a hectare. But this guy, on number 12, he's also at 10 tons a hectare. But he saved himself all of that money from 280 down to 28. So we just finished the presentation and there was so much interesting information shared. I'm gonna try and put as much as I can in this video, but really cool. So now we're gonna have a look. We're getting our yellow jackets and we're gonna be going into the factory. It's got the University of Helsinki are also here having a tour as well. So we're just waiting for a couple of yellow jackets. Yes. And then... The first thing to block the process. Clayton stop blast all of their machines via the paint and it was stop last in a good stop last day here wow. um, it's been walked over the summer in floor and it's hung up a big pipe and he lives for me oh yes it's an auger just an auger that pulls it back in and then repeats the system so it's like a giant pile of home and we just again pull the material and it gets it back like this there's no um, oils no residue no welding splatter nothing whatsoever it's just oh, yeah. completely clear and if you just touch it it's got a key in there that key will, will just allow the paint to stick to it so, so the, yeah. the most important thing about good paint is actually cleaning it back in the preparation to make it so that the piece the paint will actually stick to the metal so we do that and then it goes into a boot yep and it will get primed and undercoated yep so we have a really good primer and undercoat that flattens all of the lines and everything and actually absorbs into that teed effect. Yeah. It's a room where they add all of the base primer and it's nice and warm in here so they've sprayed it. I can't go all the way in, I assume because you've got to wear masks and things. So this has been sprayed and then obviously it's going to move into the next section. And then it will go in and it will be there. We've top coated all of the, the copper top there. Um, this looks like it's all of the parts for a mounted drill. 
um, which is going in there. So it's top coated and then it's baked in the oven there and it's left in the oven for about 45 minutes to bake out and that's what gives it the tough exterior finish yep. and that should mean that the, the paint looks good for a number of years. Straw rakes, seal the bars. So once that frame had gone through the shop blasting process and been painted, it'd be rolled out and it would look like this. So it's ready for the next stage. And this is the new assembly shed, which they have just built. So it's finished at the start of this year. And they're just kind of getting it fully kitted out with all these cranes and things so that they can then start to use it. You've got all the components sprayed and then it's just a case of assembling it. And pick the whole drill up with the crane. So when we go up the top, you'll see a, a trail drill and how we pick it up. And I'll, I'll explain it to you up there. But this shed ultimately will give us another 50% production area because we don't have to have port lift alleyways like in the top shed. We can use those cranes to actually build two TA drills in each quarter. We put this shed up this year. Um, a year ago, it probably cost half a million. Now, with the price increases, it comes to nearer a million pounds. Four doors, so we can access each quarter with its own door, and, and the machines will be built in here going forward. So this was built in 2022. The weld shop, we were 84. And 90, 95, 96 for that one. The top shed where we'll go to now, where the current production is, that was put up in 2009. I thought I was gonna have half that shed for my farm, but that never turned out that way. They moved in and took it over to the right. As I see the three metre trail, because most people, you have to really go up to six metres before you get the opportunity to have a trail. It's a throwing champion. I mean, we do four metre trail, and we also do the other um, 4.8 and the six metre and an eight metre trail. Yeah, we've been there since that. So the drill behind us is going to go to the Paris show. You've got a load of straw rakes here, and then you've got a load of frames and chassis and things for different drills. Put it on a pallet, send it down to weld, it's then welded, it's then painted, and then when it's painted it comes up to here, or will go into the new building in the future. Three metre kit being put together. So that tank is set on top of there, so it can look like that. So this is a trailed six metre drill, this one's going to France um, and it's just been finalised by the guys at the moment and tested up. Um, uh, PDI and it will be good to go uh, hopefully later today or tomorrow. Yeah, all hand assembled and everything. So it's the road to be, it's ready to go out on the farm. Yeah, the road the absolutely. Check. So we do all of the checking here. The dealer obviously receives it in, does the final checks their end, makes sure that it's up to quality. And, uh, and yeah, but they don't have to do a lot. A lot of times when they buy machines from abroad, they'll have to build it back up. And there's a lot of work in it for the dealer. So, so how long does it take to build something like this? Um, this machine should take the team around about five days to build. Um, wow. So there's cool. quite a lot of components in there, a lot of electronics and everything else. Um, so one of these will be in a bay for about five days. Oh yeah. The electronics needs to be done by hand. Yes. Um, and uh, yeah, we've got some very good guys on that. And yeah, but it just, just takes time and obviously awesome. doing... So this is a single point depth control on the drill. So we have this on the trail drills. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, basically you put, uh, put the uh, spaces in there and it oh. adjusts the hydraulic depth rams on the drill there through the centre and oh. that's what alters the, the depth of the drill. Wow, so you don't have to go to each of these individually to adjust to them. The, the, the you can just do it here. Just a single point. Literally spaces in here. That is, that? That's impressive, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite a clever system. Yeah, I'd imagine. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite complicated and yeah. quite clever. But there's a lot of hydraulics behind it and everything, which 
obviously takes the time to put in place and get running. Wow. And this machine's got seed and fertilizer on it. Yep. So the seed's being placed on the rear time and the fertilizer on the front time there. Um, <laughs> I like these extras. So this is the sort of stuff we do at home, like yeah. this, so obviously you're protecting your floor. Yeah, yeah. Shows the kind of, yeah. I guess, the value that you hold in each of these machines and yeah, the respect absolutely. you put into them. Absolutely. Yeah, paintwork's nice and thick, isn't it? It's really, really good. It's got a lot of stay because you can do 60 acres an hour with it. <laughs> <laughs> lower cost than seven or three meters seven and a half meters and nine meters are the options and uh, if they've got a lot of ground to get over then one of these uh, 12 and 15 meters and 60 acres an hour is yes. is where it's at yes. <laughs> people will be very familiar with this drill if you're viewers on my channel so behind me you've got two fresh out of the factory brand spanking new Clayton three meters size of this thing it's a very big drill i've never seen these before look at this instead of the spring tines having these on the back so it's very windy hopefully you can hear me the drill behind me here is the same type as the drill you just saw being made up in the factory so it's kind of it's gone through the raw material phase it's gone through the painting stage it's gone through the building stage and now it's out here and then it's ready for collection so we spoke about this place being the birthplace of the Clayton drill. Well, here is generation one. You can see it's not actually that much different. Looks like they're running the metering unit straight off the tire. It's got those same sort of sprung loaded chairs, CESA's subsoiling leg, and then the seeding boot dropping in afterwards. Tires, so that's in a V shape, and we saw that on the video. Really, these bout markers haven't changed at all. A tire and a some sort of scratching method, very similar. So the Finnish students are gonna jump on the coach. They're only here for half a day. That leaves kind of our small group and we're going to talk in more detail about the fields. We might even have another quick look about the factory. Jeff has arranged, because most of his kit is actually out on two day roadshow type thing, for us to go over to his relative's farm where they've got Clayton working today so that we can see it in operation. We have four teams, so it's moved a little bit more this year than what it normally would. We've been uh, straw harrowed three times now. Um, and you can see we've just left it to green up. It'll get one dose of glyphosate and we'll drill into this straight. And you were saying as soon as it starts to chit and there's a very small leaf emerge, yes. hit it again. Yeah, that's it. So that's why we've done it uh, three times. So the first time we'll, we'll shake out all of the seed, we'll get it onto the ground. It'll hit the moisture, start to grow. Once you get that sort of single leaf stage, then you go through again, you take them out and uh, about a litre of fuel an acre. Uh, two and a half a hectare and very very cheap very quick 25 kilometers an hour so it's afforded us the time to be able to go over here um, three times depending whether it remains wet or whether it's dry afterwards if it's dry afterwards we'll run the game patroller and we'll just crumble any crumb any um, clods over oh, the top okay. yep. and uh, if it's particularly um, wet um, then we'll, we'll come back on here with a straw harrow and we'll just harrow in behind the drill um, and uh, and get the soil to seed contact that way um, sometimes well obviously if it's too wet for a roller uh, it's no good at all but but again you know the fields are very supportive you can drive across here and you know not sinking in not causing any problems right. so we're at um jeff clayton's cousin's farm and he's just out here with a six meter on a massey so we've come to have a look at this Oh yeah! So, earthworm holes, the leading sign which will run down the channel here and on the banks to the side here, the seed is placed and you can see some seeds here and here spread across the whole width. Yep. Um, so we're doing a, a 7 inch, 18 centimetre band of seed. I 
So I hope you've enjoyed our tour around the Clayton factory. Obviously a massive thank you to the Clayton family and for everyone for making it really welcoming. If you've enjoyed this content, please do give it a big thumbs up. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Tim's Cotswold Farm, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.